Shalom family. Welcome to another teaching from Tail Ministries. The title of this teaching is Why I Believe the 400 Years Prophecy Applies to This Captivity. If not now, then when? Ancient Egypt. Most have started to understand that the 400 Years Prophecy, prophecy of Genesis chapter 15 does not apply to the ancient Egyptian captivity because they were not enslaved for 400 years neither were they enslaved for 430 years it just does not add up in this teaching we will assume that you understand that the ancient captivity in Egypt in the book of Exodus was not for 400 years for those not convinced please watch the following video on the topic so was the 400 year prophecy to Abraham in Genesis 15:13 fulfilled with the Egyptian captivity in the Bible? Uh, just go ahead in your browser and type in that link that you see on the screen. I'm not going to show it because it's a long video. And this particular teaching isn't meant to be long uh, because it's my opinion. It is my opinion. And I'm going to say it again. It is my opinion. And everyone else has their own opinion and so if you don't like my opinion don't accept my opinion I mean that's just the way it is right you don't have to a lot of people try to convince me to accept their opinion and I'm like okay well it's fine if you come to me with some good you know scripture or historical evidence or whatever but a lot of times it's just their opinion so uh, let, let, let's at least come to a thing with an educated guess or educated theory right uh, so this is my opinion not saying I'm correct so warning first let me say that no one truly knows if this is the end of the 400 years of captivity because like I have said in the past only the most high knows everything in this video I will state my reasons for my belief some will try to convince you that if we are wrong about the timing that there is some deception waiting them if it does not happen we continue to wait right so the bottom line is this family if I am wrong what's the big deal it doesn't happen in 2019 it doesn't happen in 2020 2021 2023 and so on right maybe maybe I mean if I'm wrong I'm wrong it's not gonna change anything we move on and continue to live right so but if it is about to happen, we should be prepared. Correct? Now, for me, based upon my understanding of Scripture, everything is there for this to happen. I mean, I am seeing every piece of the puzzle uh, put in place for the picture to come into focus, as, I, as I've mentioned before in other studies. So let's get into this study. Remember, my opinion, you don't have to accept it, and it may not happen. So, Spanish slavery in Americas. One of the biggest issues they state about the 1619 to 2019 date is the fact that slaves came to America before 1619, that the first black slaves came in 1502. The date we recognize for the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in Virginia is 1619, but the first recorded arrival in North America occurred 117 years earlier in 1502 when Juan de Cordoba sent several of his black slaves from Spain to Hispaniola. In 1517, the first slaves sent directly from Africa arrived to do forced labor on the Spanish plantations and mines in the Caribbean islands as the Native Americans enslaved by the Spanish died by the thousands from overwork and disease. More Africans were captured and shipped to replace them. The Atlantic slave trade was on. It remained a critical and brutal element of the Spanish and English economies in North America for over four centuries. So, you know, as you start studying our history, uh, you're going to find out a few things about what happened back then. Uh, you know, the fact that a lot of our people were living in Spain and living in Portugal and uh, the Roman Catholic Church tried to force our people to convert to Roman Catholicism and they wouldn't so a lot of those people got sent uh, to Guinea and Sao Tome in Africa 
but as you can see here, uh, some slaves were taken to the Americas. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing that you find out, especially like in, in, uh, in the South, a lot of people were converted to Roman Catholicism, which was always the goal of Rome, which is the beast, right? Which is that, that, that system, that, that dragon that the scriptures talk about is Roman Catholicism, which is the continuation of the Roman Empire, right? So, uh, we must understand that, uh, when we're looking at the slaves, you know, some people just look at the fulfillment of prophecy in terms of, okay, when was the first slave here? But the question is always, what does the scriptures say about those slaves and about that timing and uh, who these people are going to be enslaved by? So, you know, that's something that a lot of people don't go into that we're going to go into here. So 1502 slavery. So on the surface, this looks like a big hindrance to the 1619 date as a starting point of the 400 years captivity mentioned in Genesis 15. The assumption. The assumption by most people is that the 400 year curse has to do with when the first African slaves arrived to the United States of America. Is this an assumption on their part that holds water? If the arrival date of the first African slaves were 1502, then it has been more than 400 years since then. If it is 1619, then the Exodus would have to be next year, right? So if we're going to assume that, that in the scriptures that the 400 years is a true 400 years and uh, that our people have been here since 1619, then we would expect that to happen soon, correct? So. If we assume, though, that it was 1502, okay, that the first African slave came, or sometime within the 1500s, then it has to be over 400 years, and we will never be able to tell when the second exodus will occur. Now, Daniel was able to tell when the 70-year captivity would end, but we can't. So, here's the dilemma, y'all. Daniel knew when our ancestors were enslaved for 70 years in ancient Babylon he knew at the end of 70 years when that captivity was going to end also now we have another captivity of 400 years right so we sh we know the time frame of this captivity now the question is 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 it this captivity was it a past captivity is it a future captivity because we must understand just as Daniel knew we should know Otherwise, the most I wouldn't have told us, right? So, uh, a lot of things in the Bible, you have to use deductive reasoning, right? And, and use an, uh, uh, a logical analysis, right? You can keep the scriptures in context because as you study the scriptures, remember uh, in the past, we talked about dual fulfillment. And we talked about dual fulfillment in reference to uh, Mystery of Babylon, you know, uh, and the destruction of Babylon in Jeremiah 50 and 51. So, since we know that it was not the ancient Egyptian captivity, and I'm assuming we're in agreement on that, okay, after you watch that video, I think you'll be in agreement. If you haven't, go ahead and watch it. But we're going to make the assumption that we're in agreement that the ancient Egyptian captivity was, was not the 400 years talked about in Genesis 15. So, since we know that it was not the ancient Egyptian captivity, and it is not the captivity of the Spanish here in the Americas in 1502, we have to ask ourselves which captivity is being described in Genesis 15. It has been over 500 plus years since the Spaniards brought slaves. Also, we have to ask ourselves, how is the Spanish captivity in the Americas associated with Babylon in any way? Seeing that the final exodus is from Babylon. Let's see why I believe that the 1619 date is accurate. Now, if the 1619 date comes and go with no prophetic fulfillment, then I guess I was wrong. So remember, this is just my opinion on 1619 being a valid date for the Exodus. 1619's overemphasis, or is it? This is from a Smithsonian article. And you can see the link down below. In 1619, 20 and odd Negroes arrived off the coast of Virginia, where they were bought 
for victuals or food by labor hungry English colonists. The story of these captive Africans has set the stage for countless scholars and teachers interested in telling the story of slavery in English North America. Unfortunately, 1619 is not the best place to begin a meaningful inquiry into the history of African peoples in America. Certainly there is a story to be told that begins in 1619, but it is neither well suited to help us understand slavery as an institution nor to help us better grasp the complicated place of African peoples in the early modern Atlantic world. For too long, the focus on 1619 has led the general public and scholars alike to ignore more important issues and worse to silently accept unquestioned assumptions that continue to impact us in remarkably consequential ways as a historical signifier. 1619 may be more insidious than instructive. The over-significance of 1619 is still a common fixture in American history curriculum. So, when you read this article, they're not saying that 1619 is invalid. What they're saying is, is, like we were showing earlier, that it's not the only enslavement of African people in the Americas, right? So we saw, you know, in 1502, the Spaniards enslaved uh, Africans, right? So what they're saying is, okay, stop emphasizing 1619 because it's not the only date. But see, the reason why 1619 was emphasized is because it is the date that the English-speaking people, right, purchased for victuals or for food uh, some African slaves, right? So they were English-speaking colonialists. So my point is going to be, as we go on, that the 1619 date is valid for one particular reason. And the reason is these English colonists. So in the Smithsonian article, they talk about our overemphasis, overemphasis of the 1619 date. Not that the arrival date of Africans in 1619 was incorrect, but that other earlier dates should be emphasized as well. One thing we can accept from the article is that this date was emphasized because of the association with the English colonists. So should we continue to use the 1619 date as a benchmark, right? Should we use this as the starting point of the countdown for the 400 years captivity? And I say yes, and I'm going to show you why. So I think that the 1619 date of the English colonists captivity of the first Africans is the correct date to use and not the older days of the African arrivals. Now, why do I believe this? Let's find out. Now, the question is, could I be wrong? Yes, I could be. However, let's look at the logic for this date. Let's say my logical analysis for coming to this date as being the good starting point. So let's read Genesis 15, 12 through 16, right? As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, know for certain that for 400 years, your descendants will be strangers in a country, not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at in good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. So what do we know from these verses? One. Abraham's descendants will be enslaved for 400 years in a strange land. Two, for the Yahweh punished the nation that enslaved them. Three, afterward they will come out with great substance. Now, notice that the scriptures teach that they will be enslaved first. And that the Most High will then, what? Punish the nation that enslaved them, right? That's second, that's number two. And Third, they will come out with great substance. So what we need to take note here is the nation that enslaved them gets punished before they come out with great substance. Okay? So they, the people of, of, of God, Abraham's descendants will be enslaved first. Secondly, the Most High will punish the nation that enslaved them. Third, they will come out with great substance. 
so not ancient Egypt. As we have discussed, this cannot be ancient Egypt. If you do not understand why this is the case, watch the video we referenced earlier. The question is, is this the United States of America and do we start the countdown from 1619? Logical deduction. If we all agree that this time frame could not possibly be ancient Egyptian captivity during the time of Moses, then what time frame are we talking about? The only other captivity has to be the transatlantic slave trade, which as many of us have, many of us believe corresponds to the Deuteronomy 28 curses, right? Being scattered amongst the world as slaves by ship. So let's continue this and see why I think. Deuteronomy 28 fits in with the Genesis 15 story and how this captivity points to the 1619 date. So the key to the date of Genesis 15, 12, as we study the curses of Deuteronomy 28, we see that the majority of them occurred during the captivity here in America. The 400 year prophecy must be tied to the last Babylon, AKA Egypt, and the curses helps us identify which captivity. Is it 1502 in the United States territory under Spain or 1619 in the United States ruled by the Eagle Nation of English speaking people? The ones to control the last days Babylon. So below is a few scriptures that I'm listing of attributes applied to America and their enslavement of the true Jews, who they call blacks, who they call Africans, right? Oh, uh, African Americans is what they refer to us as today. Now, this is not exhaustive. I mean, there's so many, if you're familiar with the Deuteronomy 28 curses, that specifically only happened in the United States. Okay. And, uh, you know, we, you, you can try to make the case for other places, but we know the history of America, right? We know what happened here. So, uh, I'm going to read a few verses from, from uh, Deuteronomy 28. So, your sons and daughters will be given to another nation, and you will wear out your eyes watching for them day after day, powerless to lift a hand. A people that you do not know will eat what your land and labor produce, and you will have nothing but cruel oppression all your days. You will become a thing of horror, a byword, and an object of ridicule among all peoples where the Lord will drive you. So, we know that with America, you know, uh, America, we ended up being known as niggers, right? And they called us monkeys and all these things. So we were known by byword, right? Uh, also, they, they took our children from us, right? And sold them, right? Um, so, so, you know, this is not an exhaustive list. But as we're going, we're going to see how uh, some of these, these curses only apply to the United States and you know like I said I'm not going through all the curses and you can go and read them yourself even though you know the curses does uh, incorporate from the time of the sacking of Jerusalem uh, in 70 AD it does it starts from there but as we go on and we see what happens to our people in history uh, a lot of these curses you you'll see only happen in the United States but like I said go back and read Deuteronomy 28 because I'm, I'm not gonna cover it all but my point is we're going to make the case, or I'm going to try to make the case, that 1619 is tied to America because of these curses. And it's tied to Babylon that will be destroyed. So, Deuteronomy 28, 49, The Lord shall bring a nation against thee where? From far from the end of the earth, as swift as what? The eagle fly, a nation whose tongue thou shall not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. So although many nations enslaved Israel, the one that is most important is the one in Deuteronomy 28, 49 and 50. Important attributes. Nation against you from far away. So the nation that enslaved us had to be a nation from far away. From the ends of the earth, right? What would be considered the ends of the earth from, from let's say, African territory? Because Israel is uh, on the continent of Africa as well as our people were taken from Africa, right? So... A nation against you from far away, the ends of the earth, like an eagle. What is the attribute of this this nation? Is an eagle, whose language you will not understand. So, you know, our people did not speak English, right? And they definitely did not speak American English, right? So, one thing we know for sure: this this nation is far away from the ends of the earth, like an eagle, or has the attributes of an eagle, or emblem of an eagle. Let's say, right? 
whose, whose language we would not have known because we knew the language of ancient Egyptians, right? Because our ancestors were there, right? We know the language of even a lot of people in Europe, right? Like the Romans, you know, who spoke uh, Greek and Latin, right? The Greco-Roman Empire, right? We knew uh, the Arabic language, Assyrians. So uh, there, there's a lot of languages that we knew. So what nation at that time didn't we know, right? English language. So in conjunction with early examples that occurred in America, we have attributes that show this nation is very far away at the ends of the earth, and this nation is associated with an eagle. So although many nations may have an eagle, they aren't at the ends of the earth. Neither does their history have the same examples of persecution, like taking away and selling your children and being known by a byword, regarding neither old or young people. All of the, all of the attributes must be there to identify the nation here. So, you know, uh, everybody knows about alligator bait, how they sold out, you know, threw our children into the... Uh, the rivers and, and, you know, the swamps to as bait for alligators in Florida. We know about those things, right? So they don't regard old or young people, how they kill our old people, right? And they're killing our young people today, Tamir writes, right? It, so it hasn't ended. So America continues to fulfill the prophecies of Deuteronomy 28. So final two attributes, taken, taken to that country in ships as slaves, right? Whatever country they were taken to as slaves must align with Genesis 15, 12, 400 year prophecy. Since we know in history, this 400 year captivity never occurred until 1619. It is obvious that it did not occur in the 1500s because 400 years have already passed. So we have to ask ourselves, okay, if it's not what happened in the early 1500s, then what captivity is the 400 years talking about? Because like I said, if you watch the video about the Egyptian captivity, it was not 400 years. And, and, and that's a fact. That is a fact. And so if we know that our ancestors were not held captive in Egypt for 400 years, what prophecy are we talking about? What nation are we talking about? What captivity are we talking about? Exodus from Babylon slash Egypt. So as we have shown in many previous studies, Many Israelites were taken captive to Babylon as slaves. We have shown that we believe this Babylon to be America. We have also shown this Babylon to be associated with Egypt as well. Second Ezra 15, 10, 12. The only nation that fits the Deuteronomy 28 curses and has a people held captive for almost 400 years is America. So, you know, even Trump is recognizing our captivity in America for 400 years. So, that in and of itself should show you something that this is only the only group of people who have been held captive for over 400 years in the world history. Okay. So as I've shown, the 1619 date is when the Africans were sold to the English colonists who would end up ruling Babylon, AKA America. The English descendants are the ones still holding Israel captive today and will be the ones judged for what they and their ancestors have done to Israel. So the Smithsonian said in 1619, 20 and odd Negroes arrived off the coast of Virginia where they were bought for victuals by labor hungry English colonists. So we have this English people who today rules America, who we believe and have shown in previous studies to be Babylon and to be Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. We've shown that. Okay, so if this is the nation that currently has God's people and it's run by these English speaking people and, and, and we've shown that the Deuteronomy 28 curse has to do with this captivity, which is the transatlantic slave trade, which ties to a nation who has a symbol of an eagle, right? then we know that it has to be tied to America. And if it's tied to America, America is run and controlled by English speaking people, right? Whose symbol is the eagle, right? Which would then tie them to the control of the African slaves in 1619. So this is how I look at it, people. So America's symbol, Deuteronomy 28, 49. 
The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flight, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So remember those attributes. We talked about America fits them all. The Apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 32. Therefore, hear Abraham and see, behold, your seventh generation shall go with you, and they will go out into an alien land or a strange land. And they will enslave them and oppress them as for one hour of the impious age. But of the nation whom they shall serve, I am the judge. And the Lord said this too. Have you heard, Abraham, what I told you? What your tribe will encounter in the last days? Abraham, having heard, accepted the words of God in his heart. Now compare the apocalypse of Abraham to Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15 and the Apocalypse of Abraham are talking to the patriarch Abraham. Genesis 15, 14 states, And also that nation whom they serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. So, the most I says, what? I will judge that nation. Then afterwards you get the money and the goods and the gold and the silver and the cattle. Okay, after the nation's judged. Now compare that to the Apocalypse of Abraham. Them as for one hour of the impious age, but of that nation whom they shall serve, I am the judge. And the Lord said this too. Have you heard, Abraham, what I told you, what your tribe will encounter in the last days? So, the apocalypse of Abraham gives, gives us a point in time of the last days. The ancient Egyptian captivity was not a part of the last days, right? The last days began after the death of the Messiah. So now what we understand here is that, okay, whatever nation that held them captive for 400 years, the Most High will judge them, and then we come up with great substance. And so if you've seen the other studies that we've done on Babylon, you will see that Babylon is that nation that is going to be judged for what they've done. The Most High say this is the time of vengeance on Babylon, and we come out with great substance. And I'm of the opinion we are at the precipice of that event. So let's compare this to the ladder of Jacob. And this is chapter 5. Thus he said to me, You have seen a ladder with 12 steps, each step having two human faces, which kept changing their appearance. The ladder is this age, and the 12 steps are the periods of this age. But the twenty-four faces are the kings of the ungodly nations of this age. Under these kings, the children of your children and the generations of your sons will be interrogated. These will rise up against the iniquity of your grandsons, and this place will be made desolate by the four ascents, through the sins of your grandsons. And around the property of your forefathers, a palace will be built, a temple in the name of your God, and of the God of your fathers, and in the provocations of your children, it will become deserted by the four sins of this age. For you saw the first four busts, which were striking against the steps, angels ascending and descending, and the busts amid the steps. The Most High will raise up kings from the grandsons of your brother Esau, and they will receive all the nobles of the tribes of the earth, and who will have maltreated your seed. And they will be delivered into his hands, and he will be vexed by them. And he will hold them by force and rule over them, and they will not be able to oppose him until the day when his thought will go out against them to serve idols and to offer sacrifices of the dead. He will do violence to all those in his kingdom who will be revealed in such guilt, both to the highest man from your tribe, and whatever that word is, uh, know, Jacob, that your descendants shall be exiles in a strange land. Okay, remember what the Most High told uh, Abraham? That they will be enslaved by a people in an alien land or strange land. We have that here as well being told to Jacob. Know, Jacob, that your descendants shall be exiles in a strange land, and they will afflict them with slavery and inflict wounds on them every day. But the Lord will judge the people for whom they slave. So it's that same thing that the Most High told Abraham, right? Chapter 6, verse 
one. And when the king arises, judgment too will come upon that place. Then your seed, Israel, will go out of slavery to the nations who hold them by force. So, just like the Most High said to Abraham, right? He's going to judge that nation, and then your people are going to come out with goods and silver and cattle and gold and stuff like that, right? Great wealth. So, the same events. In the letter of Jacob, chapter 5, verse 17, we see once again that the Lord will judge the nation they serve. But the Lord will judge the people for whom they slave. In chapter 6, verse 1, we also see when the king arises, judgment too will come upon that place. Then your seed, Israel, will go out of slavery to the nations that hold them by force. The apocalypse of Abraham shows us the timing of the Genesis 15 prophecy to be in the last days. So according to Genesis 15, the nation that enslaved Israel will be judged. And we see that nation being judged in Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51, as well as in Revelation 17 and 18. After that judgment, they come out with great substance. So, Israel is told to flee, as we showed in our other teaching. Then Babylon is judged. Then they come out with great substance. So remember I told you what, what the Most High said in Genesis 15? That what? He's going to judge that nation. And then they come out with great substance. As you've seen in other studies, the Most High, before he judges Babylon, tells us to flee. Why? Because he's going to judge that nation, and then we come out with great substance. So, if we work backwards, knowing that the nation that enslaves true Israel today and fits the description of Babylon that is to be judged, it has to be none other than that English-speaking nation that rules the world today. That English-speaking nation that had the first slaves brought to them in 1619 in Virginia. So in conclusion, if the 400-year prophecy of Genesis 15 does not fit the 1619 date, then what captivity does? What other group of people could possibly fit this timeline? Just because slaves were brought here before 1619 does not mean that the captivity applies to that kidnapping. As I have shown, to make the timing fit, all of the prophecies we have seen, it has to be the 1619 captivity in America under the English slaveholders. The only ones who fit the prophecies of persecution against Israel and the ones still in charge of the land of our captivity. Many will ask, why doesn't Haiti and the other captives count in the prophecy? It is because the nation that has the symbol of the eagle that enslaved God's people at the end of the earth with a strange language has to be the one. The nation that is judged in the last days for killing God's people. The nation that in the end is Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, America. So the thing is this, family. The reason why the 1619 date makes sense is because all the prophecies lined up to the control of Babylon or this nation that enslaved God's people, right? Being an English speaking people whose symbol is the eagle. So not only is their symbol the eagle, right? They're a nation that is at the ends of the earth, right? They're a nation that spoke a strange language to our ancestors. Okay, they're, they're a, a nation that killed God's people. They're a nation that also has, has, has basically shown the world that Israel is known by a byword. So everywhere you go, they call Israel niggers, right? I mean, so everything lines up to it being America and America being Babylon, America also being that Egypt. That we was taken to in ships as slaves. And the eagle ties it to that nation, America, right? Because that is the symbol of America. And not only is it the symbol of America, all of these other attributes of the prophecy of Deuteronomy 28 as up to America, where we're still held captive to date. So the question is this if it's not America, then who? And if it is America, then at what point do we start counting from the 1500s or from the 1619 date and i would say from the 1619 date since it was the english-speaking people who are known by the eagle who if you study really goes all the way back to rome who's known by the eagle but it 
but tying it to the destruction of the nation that enslaved us, right? As prophesied in Genesis 15, that the Most High would judge that nation and that we will come out with great substance. It has to be Babylon and it has to be America. So the question is then, is it the 1619 date that we look at? And my point is, if we don't look at the 1619 date, then what other date is there? Nothing else fits. And then how long do we wait? Another 400 years? I mean, anything is possible because we only see through a glass darkly. But the question is, if it's 400 years, we've been here as a people for 400 years next year, counting from the 1619 date. So this is my case for it being the 1619 date that we start counting for the 400 years, which ends next year in 2019. So someone will ask the question, what if nothing happens next year? Then I was wrong and we wait on the most high. These are just my opinions based upon my understanding of end time prophecies concerning true Israel. So don't come and say, tales say it is going to happen in 2019. Oh, it didn't happen in 2019 like Teo said. So they false prophets, they false teachers. Told you you shouldn't have listened to them. This is just my opinion. I could be wrong. I want you to see my logic for believing that next year is the end of our captivity. If it doesn't happen, cool. I won't tell you when I think the next date is if it doesn't happen because I have no idea. Because I'm seeing all the signs there. So if you're not a Patreon member, uh, please become a Patreon member because teachings like this, uh, a lot of times are going to be part of an early release, right? And we also have other teachings that are not released at all. Okay. And we're going to have more and more of those types of teachings that are only uh, for Patreon. So if you like the teachings, if you feel you're learning something and, you know, great, you know, uh, become a Patreon member because there's benefits to being a patron. So thank you for listening, family. Do your own research. Pray about this because uh, Israel, your captivity is ending.